Okay guys, I am going to lap this left intake valve. So basically what you want to do is take a little bit of uh, valve grinding compound, just put a little bit on um, the valve. Don't need a lot, maybe just a pinch. Put some just a little bit on here, kind of just work it around. Put a little bit on here. Let's drop it in there. get your valve lapper pop it on there and then what you want to do is kind of do like a Mr. Miyati left and right motion and what you do is you can actually hear it grinding it's loud right now but you want to get to the point where you can't actually hear it. Just start to quiet up. Almost like it's smooth. So that sound will get less and less and grinding. I'm trying to hear it smooth out. It's almost quiet. It's got a little bit of a... Uh, compound on here. So you can almost hear there's almost no sound. Look at this. Let's clean this up. Definitely don't want to leave any more residue of this grinding compound in here. Looks pretty good. So it should seat pretty well. All right. So I'm going to do the rest of these and then uh, we'll keep moving on. Okay guys, I'm going to put these uh, oil seals on. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, ultra, ultra slick assembly lube on these um, washers, these base washers. Drop them in and then I'm going to put the oil seals on. I'm going to lube this up, lube this up some lube on there get it all just lubed up throw it in throw it in throw it in throw it in, in. alright then I'm going to open these guys up at a time these actual seals here these little seals the easiest way I uh, found to put these in is to take an allen three millimeter Put a little bit of oil on here, lubed up, put it on here, drop it in, and should just pop right in, boom. Drop it in, and boom, pops right in. 
This is actually a glider. You just use it and it goes in very easy. That's what they look like inside. This actually uses as a glide and you could just put it in and those just pop right in. All right, so I'm gonna put a time lapse on. Okay guys, I got the new valves installed. I got the new uh, spring kit installed. It's by uh, Kibble White Precision Machining Company. Um, ain't gonna lie, it was a bitch getting those keepers in. Um, this is the tool I got, I bought it off of Amazon. If you're gonna get one of these tools, get, get a good one. This is made in China and I don't recommend it. It is a bitch. Um, so these are the old valve springs. Had to reuse the keepers. Um, so I basically got new valves, new springs, and uh, new seals. So this is what it looks like from the other side. Right there. It's all cleaned up. Ready to be put back into the motorcycle. Actually, I need to um, put the uh, shims on and then check the valve clearance. Can do that off the motorcycle. So that will be the next steps. So there it is, and we got the cat wanting to help. It's gonna get hair all up in my my valves. All right, so on to the next step. It's late. I'm gonna actually call it the night and pick up in the morning. All right. Okay, guys, I have the uh, shims out of the DRZ, and I took the measurements. So basically, the intake um, clearance should be 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 between 0.10 to 0.20 millimeters and the exhaust should be 0.20 to 0.30 millimeters in clearance it says that right here in the manual valve clearance intake 10 to 20 exhaust 20 to 30 and that's what we have right here so what I found out is that um, usually these shims have the actual numbering on um, on the shim, but after wear and tear, um, those numbers actually disappear. So what you need to do is actually get um, a gauge and uh, measure your actual shim measurement. So for example, this was reading 283 and this was 282. I'm assuming this might have been a 285 shim. Uh, let me put the camera down and I'll show you. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to measure this shim to get the actual millimeters. Zero that out. And the shim is about 282.8. 82 millimeters, 0 0.283, 0 0.282 millimeters, and that's the left intake. So that's how we measured all of these shims. So what we need to do is our clearance on our left and right were zero. So basically, I wasn't even inspect spec. I was zero clearance. So what I did was take the max intake clearance and I'm going to minus that from the 283 and that's going to give me 263 
and do the same thing for this one 282 minus 20 it gives me 262 so if I go with um, a 265 that should work or let's see let's go with the 260 so we want to be a little bit lower so we'll go to 260 on that one and then we'll check the clearance and for this one this was off by um, just a little bit it was 18.18 millimeters clearance we got to be in point two zero to three um, point three millimeters so what I did was um, I just dropped it down one shim size 305 310 minus 305 is 5 and if we add that to 18 we will be at 23 which will put us right here in spec same thing here, 5 plus 5, 23, we'll be right in here, right in spec right there. So that's what we want. So we will use a 305 shim and a 305 shim. So we have the shim kit right here. And the nice thing about these is that when you come here, here's the 305. We need two of these for the exhaust. 305. And then we need 260 for this. So that should put us right about in spec. Give or take a couple millimeters. I bought this shim kit for, um, I don't know man, these with inflation, it was like 80 bucks for this, it was crazy. But these are pretty good shims, the hot cams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in and uh, check the valve clearance. Alright, so let's look at that and I'll show you what it is once I reinstall it. Okay guys, I don't know why I actually went and said 260, so... Um, Looking at this, I probably should have went up 265 because if we take 283, 283 minus 265, that puts us at 0 0.18, that would be in spec. So if I went 283 minus 260, that puts me over spec at 0 0.23, 0 0.23 millimeters. So. I have to use a 265, 283 minus 265, yeah it'll put us in 0.18, we want to be kind of in that pocket, and looking at the shims, let's look at the shims, you only go up in increments of 5, so I have to use a 265, I see 265 right there. Yeah, it only gives in increments of five, so we should have went with the 265. All right, so I'm gonna try the 265, and let's see how it how it works. Guys, these are in, so let's try the 23 uh, millimeter filler gauge for the exhaust. That's the spec we came up with. Let's see how it is. Looks good. It's going underneath, it's a little bit snug. Let's try this side. Same thing, looks good. So we are in clearance. Uh, for the intake, we're gonna do between 18 and 20. Let's see 18. 18 fits, so we do have a little bit more wiggle room. It's a little snug, let's see if we can do 20. is pretty tight. So we are, actually we're in spec, so we, we should be good. We should be good. So we used a 265 and a 305 shim. Okay, so I'm gonna
put this back on the bike. This is all done and ready to go. The next step is to put on the piston and ring. So um, that will be in the next video. I'm going to end this video here. All right. Thank you.